Christopher Marlowe, at the time of Elizabethan period, set the very course of dramatic writing. He is the English playwright and poet who is considered the first great English dramatist and the most important Elizabethan dramatist before William Shakespeare. Marlowe is university wit and he is universally acknowledged at the best and the greatest of the university wits. Although his entire activity as a playwright lasted only for six years, his masterpieces like the tragical history of Dr. Foster's or Edward II stands alone at this time, the Elizabethan time or the pre-Elizabethan time before the advent of William Shakespeare. It has rightly been said about him that Marlowe paved the way Shakespeare perfected it. He was a man of fiery imagination and immense thought content. He is personally of ill-regulated powers which led him a wild bohemian life. His tragedies reflected his own image in dramatic format. Marlowe wrote four immortal tragedies, Taimul the Great, Jew of Malta, Dr. Foster's, and Edward II. In Marlowe's play, the interest centers wholly on the personality of the tragic hero. The authentic and aesthetic pleasure, whilst watching that personality or that personality struggling heroically against the heavy odds and miser mountainable circumstances that conflict was added to the conception of the tragedy for the first time. Marlowe is by far the greatest among Shakespeare's predecessors and decidedly the greatest of university wits. Earlier university wits had concentrated on comedy, Marlowe worked on tragedy and advanced it considerably as a dramatic medium. Hi everybody, you are watching Edis English Literature. I am Ardhen Dude and in this video lecture we will try to access English playwright and poet Christopher Marlowe and Christopher Marlowe's contribution to English drama particularly. We will try to get the key points of understanding his dramaturgic technology or dramaturgic qualities. But before we begin our discussion, a few words on the fascinating life of Christopher Marlowe. Born in Canterbury on February 6, 1564, the son of a shoemaker, Marlowe was educated at the University of Cambridge. Going to London, he associated himself with the Admiral's Men, a company of actors for whom he wrote most of his plays. He was reputedly a secret agent for the government and numbered some prominent men including Sir Walter League among his friends but he led an adventurous and dissolute life and held an orthodox religious views that's the turning point in his career so he meddled with, with all those odds in his personal life in 1593 he was denounced as a heretic and before any action could be taken against him, in May of that year, he was stabbed to death in a tavern brawl at Deport over uh, payment of a dinner bill or that kind of thing. Now, that has been a controversial historical fact. Some presume that 
He faked his own death and wrote many dramas credited to William Shakespeare in later years. We will not venture into that or such controversies, rather a few points on him as a university wits first. Now here is the list of university wits and their publications. Look at them. The constellation of university weeds made the Elizabethan drama more popular with the Renaissance humanism and pride of patriotism. That's the new Renaissance culture that has been prevalent and university weeds started all this. English drama for the first time in their hands recognized its potentialities and exuberance. They wrote classical plays, courtly comedies, farces, chronicle plays, melodramas, and there are plenty of other applications. They gave thrill, they gave action, sensation, humor, music. Thus, it is fair to say that the Elizabethan drama formed culture of the Elizabethan time. Now, those were rather orderly and rapid development and it was in a grand scale all of these dramatists were moved by some passion or the other now taking into marlowe's writing tamerlan has boundless passion for power dr Faustus has the infinite passion for knowledge now christopher marlowe made momentous and revolutionary contributions to English drama among these university wits. The first great English dramatist and the most important Elizabethan dramatist before William Shakespeare, Marlowe worked on tragedy and advanced it considerably as a dramatic medium. Comedy has been a culture of that time and it was rather invented in a revolutionary way by other university wits. But Marlowe perfected the tragedy. First of all, he created blank hearts and firmly established it as the most appropriate medium of poetic drama. Secondly, he founded the genre of English romantic tragedy, you know. And finally, one main point that he has exhibited or experimented in English historical play for the first time. Now coming to the first point, what is blank verse? Blank verse is unrhymed poetry typically in iambic pentameter and as such the dominant verse form of the English dramatic and narrative poetry since the mid 16th century it it has been popularized and been accepted by the authors because it is this mighty line one can express the very heaviness of the tragic plot blank verse was adapted by the italian renaissance writers first and from the classical sources it became the standard form of such dramatists as lodo vico aristo tasso from Italy, like all of the Renaissance elements, blank verse was brought into English literature by the poet Henry Howard and Earl of Surrey, who first used it in their uh, translation of books, uh, second and four of the Enid, the Roman poet Virgil, and dramatic applications first in the drama Gorboda. The so called university wits developed it further till their master, the master artist. On whom, on whom this particular lecture is there is Marlowe. Marlowe made it magic. The music with it and marvelous mighty line he added in it. Shakespeare in this respect was a true student of Marlowe in fact. The master in blank verse and his early works permit with the overt and convert influences of the Marlowean rhetoric that cannot be denied. Early blank verse is very regular and monotonous you know the heaviness of the unrhymed heaviness of the each lines 
the cat stopped line with a pause after the second pull providing little substitution of the other fit for the basic iron. Marlowe of course, of course tried to improve it and in his hands the blank part sounded with what is known as Marlowian music. By revealing the possibilities of strength and the variety of expression in blank bars, Marlowe definitely helped to establish the verse form as the, pre, as, the, as the predominant form in English drama. But there are some innovations, there are some implications that has been improved by Shakespeare in considerable way with the magic of some intuition, some changes. But Marlowe started with a dignified way, the blank verse. Now, principal four plays that Marlowe has written, the heroic dramatic epic Tambul and the Great Part 1, which was published in 1587 about the 14th century Mongol conqueror, the tragical history of Dr. Faustus, 1588, one of the earliest dramatizations of the Faust legend, and the tragedy, the Jew of Malta, which was published in 1589. And Edward II in 1592. Now these are where earlier successful English historical dramas and these were the model for Shakespeare's Richard II, Richard III which were published in later course of history. In each of these Marlowe's plays, Marlowe's dramas, one forceful protagonist with a single overriding passion dominates and that has been the most striking features in Marlowe's writing. Now Marlowe was also the author of the two lesser plays, lesser known plays, Tragedy of Dido and Queen of Carthage, completed by the English dramatist Thomas Nash and the massacre at Paris. Now some authorities believe Marlowe also wrote parts of several of Shakespeare's plays that I have hinted in the early of my lecture. Each of the Marlowe's important plays has as a central character a passionate man doomed by or doomed to destruction by a, uh, by a kind of uh, force and inordinate desire for power. The plays are further characterized by beautiful sonorous language and that is heavy with blank hearts and emotional vitality which is however at times unrestrained to the point of bombast. This, this is um, Marlovian emotions. Literary historians describe Marlowe's achievement in all of the words. Marlowe raised the subject matter of English drama to higher level. So from the content category Marlowe dragged English drama to the higher position. The, uh, he dealt with heroic subjects that had a stirring effects on the imagination. His heroes were Tambulan. Now take for Tambulan a world conqueror he is Tambulan the Great. Now take it Foster, a scholar seeking supreme knowledge. You can find it in the drama The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus. In Barabbas, dreaming of figures on the stage enlarged in man's mind the bounds of the possible. You can find it in the Jeeva Malta. So, innovative ideologies, innovative categories of taking the subject matter into lofty way and the treatment of that subject in blank parts is all made possible by Marlowe. Now these plays were a pian to the infinity of military power, of knowledge, of wealth. The subject Marlowe borrowed, the heroes he molded were no more than his mouthpiece, voicing his exorbitant dreams. Like him, all the characters, tragic characters, particularly Tambulan, Dr. Foster's, Joe Malta, 
they sought the infinite like Marlowe, they were never stated. Marlowe is regarded as the rebel and pioneer. He raised the standard of revolt against the convention of writing plays in rhyme and against the clown age of popular comedy. So there is a revolt nature in Marlowe and that has been exhibited in his choice of subject. Marlowe seized upon blank verse as the ideal medium for drama, which was introduced into England by the Earl of Surrey. By revealing the possibilities for strength and variety of expression in blank verse, Marlowe helped to establish the verse form as the predominant form in English drama. Now Marlowe was the founder of genuine romantic tragedy as regards both plot and character. Before Marlowe, the characters in plays had to often been mere lifeless puppets. In fact, Marlowe informed his central characters and the whole of his dialogue with life and passion. So what he needed? The drama. The drama he stopped with life and passion and becomes a living character. He was an admirer of Machiavelli, whose ideal as understood by, the, by that particular Elizabethan age was a superman. Having decided what his goal is to be and presses on to its regardless of this scrapples of conscience. In each of the dramas, one forceful pregnant, a forceful connecting protagonist are there. In the part of Tamulan, who seeks to conquer the world, trembling humanity mercilessly beneath him in his resistless course. Such is Foster's, whose ideal is boundless and lawless knowledge for the sake of universal power. Such is the case of Barabbas, the Jew of Malta, revealing first in his prodigious wealth and then in the very ecstasy of revenge on those who had deprived him of it. Such as Mortimer in Edward II, which is a beautiful kind of history play and both unscrupulous ambition and resolution, those are the subject that make their ruins. Now in Marlowe's studying of these characters, you will know that he is the man of the Elizabethan time, the passion, the robust zeal for that infinite power, knowledge has also dominated Marlowe's ideologies. Apart from Marlowe's dramas, there are kind of poetry, the passionate suffered, uh, uh, and Marlowe's mythological love poem, Hero and Leander, which was uh, unfinished at his time of death, and which was later completed by George Chapman and which was later in published in 1598. Now, um, another sort of translation works are also there in Marlowe. The ancient Latin poets Lucan and Ovid, several of the works has been translated by Marlowe. So in this video lecture, you have understood Marlowe the very Elizabethan or pre-Elizabethan character at the best of the university wits who has shaped the very lines of tragic drama particularly and uh, by that chisel way or by that cemented path Shakespeare paved his own popularity own uh, writing style. We cannot deny the fact that if there had not been a Marlowe uh, the tragic intensity of the Elizabethan drama that has been perfected by Shakespeare and other writers might not have been a possibility. So understanding Marlowe and his writing is the best way uh, by which we can build a understanding of Shakespearean empire. With that hope that you will take ample opportunity to study Marlowe and Marlowian writing in your course of literature. I say goodbye now, like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel so that I can 
शेयर मोर पोस्ट लाइक दिस बाय बाय थैंक यू